We switch things up and look at what's outside the Star Wars galaxy on today's lore video. Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slatter. Hello and welcome to another daily Star Wars lore video. Before we begin, if you haven't already, take a second and go follow me on Twitter. I'm super active over there, but all of my Star Wars buddies have more followers than me, which is frankly a little embarrassing. Anyway, I thought it'd be fun if today we did something different and remade, condensed, and improved a bunch of my older videos into one sort of super video. Specifically today, we'll be looking at what actually exists outside the Star Wars galaxy, a topic that we've somewhat addressed before, but will do so comprehensively today. It almost goes without saying that Star Wars exists in a universe with other galaxies, perhaps even our own, if we take the opening crawl for its word. In Legends, there was even an organization known as the X-Gal Society, which was meant to monitor for extragalactic communications and activities. Notably, an X-Gal outpost was the first true target for the Praetoriate Vong as they invaded. On that note, a good place to start this video is by looking at other galaxies, including the Yuuzhan Vong's ancestral galaxy, which was decimated by wars causing the Vong to leave in the first place. We're not actually sure where this galaxy was, but the Vong had been traveling throughout the intergalactic void for thousands of years, so long that they forgot their early history. And during the New Jedi Order, it's suggested that they actually stopped or visited other dead galaxies before finally invading. Similar to the Yuuzhan Vong, there was another galaxy destroyed by War, which we learn about in issue 38 of the Marvel Star Wars comics. Basically, the ship and its pilot are the only known survivors of a devastating war, and it discovers Luke and Leia after the two accidentally travel into the intergalactic void. If you're interesting, I've covered this entire issue in a dedicated video, which I'll link above. Interestingly, it's possible that one of these galaxies may have been a companion to the galaxy far, far away. And in fact, the unreleased and thus non canon and in novella, Supernatural Encounters, The Trial and Transformation of our whole Hextrophon, outright states that the Yuuzhan Vong did come from a companion galaxy. But again, though that's available to read online, it isn't canon. Anyway, back on topic. There were seven galaxies at the very least orbiting the main Star Wars galaxy. These are referenced in the Essential Atlas, which has the following quote. Then there are the dwarf satellite galaxies, some of which have 20 billion stars. They're ranked by distance, closer ones first. Now, I'll talk about the first two in a bit more detail in just a second, but the book goes on to say that the third and further galaxies are much further than at least 150,000 light years far away, and likely never visited. However, dwarf galaxies represent only a portion of extragalactic stellar objects. There are also around 200 globular clusters, with hundreds of thousands of stars each, and these are significantly above or below the galactic rim, such that they're not properly part of the galaxy but they're also self-contained. A good example of this was Cosm's Well, which was noted for being very beautiful. There were other bodies still near the rim, but technically extragalactic, like the Red Nebula from the classic Star Wars Marvel run, or more notably, the planet of Kamino, which is described as being near the Rishi Maze. Arguably, portions of the unknown regions could also be considered extragalactic, like the Cyru Star Cluster, and if we're being specific, the Empire actually considered the companion galaxies as part of the unknown regions, but I'll leave it at that today. As a note, in Legends, but not canon, the rendezvous location for the Rebel fleet at the end of The Empire Strikes Back was known as Haven and was outside the galaxy. Speaking of, now is probably a good time to return and cover the Rishi Maze and Fire Fist, the two nearest companion galaxies. The Rishi Maze is described in the Essential Atlas as containing only a few inhabited worlds, though it is visited by Han and Chewie in the short story Maze Run, during which they visited not only a rebel refinery, but also ran into a derelict Sith ship. Fire Fist, on the other hand, features in the final arc of the Marvel comics, and is home to several invading alien races. That being said, it was almost never visited by inhabitants of the Star Wars galaxy and was more or less unknown. And really, that's true generally for extragalactic locations. Although efforts were made, especially with the outbound flight project, we don't have any records of successful expeditions. And this is partially because of the hyperspace anomaly, which seemed to cut off large portions of the galaxy from intergalactic space. One noted hole in the barrier was Vector Prime, where the Vong entered. Some have hypothesized 
realized that this feature was created by the Celestials in Ancient Race, and I've discussed that in a prior video, which I'll link above. In both Legends and Canon, Palpatine was interested in exploring not only the Unknown Regions, but also other galaxies. Canon has described those attempting to leave the galaxy as returning mad due to isolation or death. Meanwhile, Palpatine had observatories plotting tracks outside the Galactic Rim. Legends Palpatine had similar aspirations, and the Dark Empire was intended to be universe-spanning, as described by the Dark Empire sourcebook. As a final note, the Charon race, which we'll briefly mention later, is described as a killer of galaxies, which I think is interesting language. But let's get a little bit weirder. There are more than just physical extragalactic locations. There are what I'd call different realms, and the best example of this would be hyperspace, which is actually another dimension. Other space, on the other hand, was a sort of dimension between real space and hyperspace, and was home to species like the Charon, who were trapped there. This dimension seemed to be naturally created, however others weren't, including the City of Dreams created by Cody Sunchild, or the pocket dimension that Wutzek used when stealing vessels from the Hell Hoop. Waru, the Rosum, and the Nal Nal were also said to come from another dimension, and Waru speaks of his own galaxy, but details here are pretty scant. Getting more mystical, Legends gives us chaos, which is basically hell where evil spirits go, and the other world, which is sort of like Ewok hell. In canon, we have the world between worlds, and both universes have spirit realms. Aside from that, the Bedlam spirits were said to be able to seamlessly travel across space and time. And that's all for today. This dives into the weirder parts of Star Wars Legends, which is honestly my favorite thing to do. If you have a question or a scenario you'd like to see me cover, make sure to leave it down below. As a note guys, if you're as interested in this stuff as I am, the really weird and strange parts of Star Wars, I highly recommend you check out the Supernatural Encounters novella that I mentioned earlier. Although it was never published under the Legends banner, it did start production under Legends and would have been published had the buyout not incurred. However, the entire text was released online, and it's just insane. It goes over everything from the beginnings of the universe, the secrets of the Celestials and the Ricotta, and I'm almost positive literally every single thing that I mentioned in today's video and ties them all together. However, the lore is extremely complicated, so be prepared not to understand it all if you're not completely up to date. Still, it's a fun read and I plan to do some videos on it after I've given it a second or third read through. I mean, they spend part of the novella in other space, they talk to the computer from the very first Star Wars dailies comic, I mean even the Bedlam Spirits are heavily featured, so I'll put a link to that down in the description. No question of the day today, we'll get back to that in the next video, but if you have something you'd like me to address just quickly at the end of a video, leave it down below with the hashtag AskEck. Anyway, until next time guys, this has been Eckhart's Ladder, may the force be with you.